Good Thursday morning, everyone. Good I'm, morning. I'm Eric. I'm Robin. Wonderboom. We actually have a special thing today. Yeah, because uh, we don't have a ton of questions. So uh, we, and also, you know, last week you guys saw our uh, our fellow quarantine. We had a friend Phil, come and who, visit us. Uh, yes, brought us that incredible coffee. Um, oh, and so, so good, you guys. Yeah, so and what we decided to do was uh, was do a really good a tour of his rig, his mobile coffee roasting rig, which is really which cool. He actually, which he lives in as well. Yeah, so he and is a his nomad. Uh, small, tiny house space. So uh, uh, check, check that out. out. Yeah. It's awesome. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Phil. I'm the roast master. The roast master. Crazy. you i'm phil i uh i'm the coffee roaster uh owner of a pasta coffee roastery which is uh the one and only as far as my knowledge is concerned um fully operational traveling coffee roastery i have not heard of one myself no you, there was not one at cop at schooly palooza or any of the events no no I, no you get coffee but not an actual roastery right no not so a roastery it's no. quite a bit different um yes I started doing it about five years ago, uh, after I'd been traveling uh, the Renaissance Fair circuit for a number of years at that point, and fell in love with it just home roasting. Um, and last October I ended up upgrading to this giant trailer <laughs> yeah. that also has a living space, if you guys want to see the inside. Yeah, how long is it? Uh, 28 feet overall, 32 overall, 28 long. Okay, awesome. Uh, it's got 12 foot living space with 16 foot roastery aka garage wow big bathroom big bathroom oh this is yeah. makes me jealous yeah so full shower if yeah. you peek around the door nice fart fan yep helps uh helps with the heat so oh, as of hey. now where's that from no idea a friend of mine found it at a thrift store in north carolina nice actually a real full-on painting there is a name there Maybe someone will know who it, who it, who it is. So this uh, both electric and oh, so propane. They get, yeah. they get the full you freezer. Like it. That's domestic. That's nice. Full fridge, which is plenty that supplied is nice. with beer today. Um, what, that's so weird. Why <laughs> well, would you have well beer? Stopped, you know, yeah. That's I mean, so unlike you. It's the beer fridge. That's it's the right. beer fridge. Ooh, there's chocolate cookie. I know where to come for ice cream now. Mm -hmm. Mm. So is that your sink? Uh, no, that is just more open storage. Storage. So this is the water tank that's underneath there. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow, all right. And so where does the water come, where does the, how does that work? Does that go? Uh, that, that's all for up here in oh, the bathroom. So the, oh, gotcha. Yep. Okay, so you just use this sink for yep. whatever needs you have. Yep, and then I actually have an outdoor sink as well that just gets connected to a hose oh. for the faucet. Oh, perfect. Because you do a lot of outdoor stuff, so. I do. You do so typically when I'm set up, my awning's out. Right. And then my whole kitchen is set up outside. Oh, that's so nice. All the pots and pans and everything out there with the sink. Mm -hmm. So everything's um, ready for you to use. So you got a microwave in here for yep. the emergencies. Yep. In case you need so the tasty yeah. bites. Let's see how the let's see how this thing moves. How the bed moves? Yeah. Right. So this looks like kind of a like a Murphy bed type situation. So this is a Murphy bed. Eric built one of these in a step van, so so with built, a desk on the other side, or with oh, a, and then you guys, there's a whole yeah. upper bunk up here too. Which, that's what, that's all that was here. Uh -huh. There was nothing, and then there was this little wow. pedestal table. Yeah, for a table. Set. And I said no mm -hmm. to all that business, and sleeping up there was dumb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted yeah. to maximize my bed size. Plus, you, you, this is a big, nice, big desk workspace yeah. for your business. And this I is mean, actually yeah. the worktop from my old roasting trailer, which was a six by twelve enclosed trailer. Wow. So this is your second roaster. Yeah. So you so probably second trailer are, with the roaster. So same roaster from the first trailer. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. Yep. I just up, drastically upgraded the size of my trailer. And you can so. just look for, light through there and see the roastery. Yep. yep. Everything's in there. Yeah. So I built this. That this smells so good in there. Yeah. Stuff out of the way. So, you know, tiny living. Everything has its own home that moves four times a day to <laughs> everything else. Yep. Has a spot. So this is pretty simple. The legs just fold up. Nice. And there's a chain and a hook on both sides. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see you. Okay. So that Just so it doesn't flop, flop around. down. Yeah. And then the two barrel locks. And there's awesome. bed. Very nice. nice. That's a nice big bed too. Queen? Full size. Full full. Yeah. 
I could have almost got the queen in here, except I wouldn't. I would have had to move the microwave. That's oh. nice. I like your beautiful order too. Thanks. Very yeah. homey. <laughs> your moments. It's just back yes. up yeah. open to. That is nifty. That is really quick. Yeah. Very nice. Quick and easy. Yeah, I beautiful. tossed around different ideas for design. I was gonna have like an arm that came up with a pivot. Keep it this off is the ground. brilliant because it just it doesn't take any up any space and and yet yeah. by having it a square it just kind of makes it like a right. detail well, instead of like a well, weird thing. Which, and it's, it's putting it at really, the really, really diagonal like idea. that too, it doesn't want to right. flop out or whatever, right. yeah, and it gives really you better support when it's actually down too. Down. So yeah, great engineering. Stable. That's yeah. really good. And then really it's just nice. laid down to the floor, which is just yeah. three quarter inch plywood. So Phil has experience as a carpenter and obviously. a builder, so uh, yeah. obviously <laughs> clearly shows in his uh, carpenter some... for sixteen years before I moved on. Yeah, what yeah. made you get on the road? Um, I was eighteen. It was pretty much the day I turned eighteen. I hopped on a bus and moved to Atlanta. Lived there for about a year. Um, it was right at the two thousand eight recession. Wow. Okay. And I couldn't. I had no work for about five months at oh all. God. And, and that's when you were doing carpentry and stuff? Mm -hmm. I was still doing carpentry, and then I ended up flying back to Minnesota. Uh, by the boss that I had there flew me back for this job. Um, did that job, and I said I hated Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> um, Enough with the cold. Yeah, mostly the winter. Yeah, yeah. And then I, uh, we understand I that. ended up doing the Arizona Renaissance Festival. I got a job there from a friend who referred me. Actually, on my way to Arizona from Minnesota, I... Drove to Georgia to pick him up with his motorcycle. A <laughs> little bit out of the way, but uh. And then we made our trip across. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cool. And that was and that changed your life forever. Totally did. There's been I think, twice since then that I've tried to get off the road and always wound up back on. <laughs> Keeps dragging me back in. Yeah. I have to warm the roaster up. Okay. It'll take about. 30 minutes. Um, at which point, then the roasting will commence. Oh, God, that smells good in here. I just wait. <sighs> I mean, go so. ahead and just explain what the normal process it would be. Uh, normal process. Well, who are you first? Yeah, who the f are you? Who the f <laughs> am I? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Phil. I'm the roast master. The roast master. Say, of my small traveling coffee roastery, Apothic Coffee. Woohoo! Apothic Coffee? Um, Apothic Coffee, coffee Roast. Good name. Awesome. Great name, Will. There. Awesome. And you got your own roaster in your own trailer here. Yes, all this right here. Amazing. Just simple, it's all propane for the heat. Uh, burners are under here. Right. So then I'll light those up, and like I said, it takes about 30 minutes to heat up. Get up to, up to temperature. Um, it's a drum roaster, so inside of here, the giant drum that has fins like a concrete mixer. Oh yeah, okay. Um, yep. So it's constantly moving the beans around back and forth. Um, this is where we charge the beans. The green coffee goes in here, flip the handle, they all fall into the roaster once it's heated up. Um, and each batch takes approximately 14 minutes. Wow, that's pretty quick. Um, and then they come out into here, which is the cooling tray. Um, Cool off. Have you guys green coffee? I've seen it once before. Oh, look at this, hun. What's going on in here? Some oh, coffee look. roasting. Nice. Just a little green Brazil. I look like peanuts. So, are most of the beans that color when you before you roast? Yes. There's a few variations depending on its origin and the processing. So, it looks like you're doing a couple of few gallons here. This is 12 pounds to start with. Switch up to 15 pounds. So it's really warm. So what are you doing right now? That is charging, is what that's called. Oh, okay. Um, which is charging the beans. So you have to heat the roaster up to a charge temp. I go between 420 and 440, uh, depending on the beans and the climate around me, I guess, however I feel it. Um, and then it will plummet, so you'll see over here, the red temp is the exhaust temp, um, and the yellow one is the bean temp. 
So those are just going to plummet and plummet and plummet down to the turning point of the moment of the flat line. Really tricky. Very cool. I think we got some. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's amazing. It was, so do you start with one batch and then you add to it? Um, or no. Do you do everything separately? One batch at a time. Um, I have some blends that I'll blend uh, pre roast. So I'll blend all the green beans together and then charge it. Um, and some that I'll blend post roast. Um, it really depends. This batch is going to be a blend that is post roast. So now we've hit that turning point. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's going to start to climb back up slowly. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, the idea is that you want to get a consistent rate. Uh, rate of rise when, when they're no, raising the temperature. No quick temperature changes. No. You know, until you're done roasting and when it gets into the cooling tray, then you want it to drop as fast as possible so oh, the roasting okay. stop. Like when you blanch vegetables. Right. Right. You want to get it to that point and then you want it to be done. Right. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. If you want to smell it looks that, like charred. Yeah, it looks like um, lentils or something. Yeah. Peanuts. Another 15 degrees or so, it's like to hit that cinnamon. Yeah, I can tell. Um, and then after first crack, you go through what they call the developmental stage, which is where you'll develop the, uh, the, the layer profile. Of, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we'll hit second crack where you'll then move into your dark roast coffee. Ah, okay. Oh, so anything before? Be like, for, right after first craft, it's going to be a light roast. Okay. Um, and then through that next uh, developmental stage, you'll get through the medium roast level, um, and then it moves into dark roast. So is it actually like a sound that yes. just differentiates? Wow, that's so interesting. So there's like a whole... Yeah. So you'll hear it you'll hear while crack, and as, and as this is happening, we have this called a fryer. Oh, yeah. You can pull beans out. Wow. And if you smell them, they'll change oh, scent. Oh, nice. Okay. So then, yeah, that's very light. Yeah, it's still light now. Um, then it'll enter the yellowing. Um, then it'll turn into like a cinnamon. And then it'll become brown. Okay. Uh, this is this so happens. cool. So, total chemical reaction happening. Yeah. We're hitting that cinnamon. Oh, look at that. Caramely. Mm hmm. And it hits sort of like, uh, it's almost like alfalfa scent. Oh wow, yeah, a little uh, grassy. Yeah. And if you do light roast, it does kind of have that element to it, like very, but that's not even there yet, right? No, not quite. So Forget what's the temperature you're hitting? Kind of? uh, for this, I want to shoot for um, 442 on the, on the bean tank. Wow. Um, we're going to hit first crack in right around 390, 392. Oh, okay. and there it all goes pretty quick. Wow. <laughs> I suppose in the dryness is, yeah, they're so dry yeah. at that point, it's just a matter of getting yeah. that rest of the, the way. That's what the crack is too, it's all of the, the oils and stuff inside of the bean, heating up to that temperature where they react, mm -hmm. and then it cracks. Ah, okay. So, and then the nice. second crack, it does that a little bit more. Uh -huh. It's hard to see the, the numbers, the digital yeah, numbers on the camera. Like that. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see if it looks different. Yeah. I shoot to hit first crack between 9 and 11 minutes, which looks like the right one. So now we have coffee. Look at that. And now it smells like coffee. Oh, yeah. So what type of it is that? That was the... Um... This is uh, for some, because that's where you get all the coffee. So as we get closer, they get a little bit darker, a little bit more consistent. They smell more and more like coffee. Uh, so right now we're at a we're at a straight medium row. So my roasts are unlike many others. I got to tip it to get the beans to drop because of the way the guy designed it. So now we're in the second crack. Second crack, people. Oh, there we go! Wow! It is like popcorn! Wow! <laughs> 
So I've already got water hot. Okay. Or it was hot. I can shut it off. So what? Uh, yeah. What is your preferred temperature for? Um, I use. Uh, I go to 185. Mm -hmm. um, the Specialty Coffee Association recommends 195, 196. Right. Um, I found that 185 seems to be better. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Come on in, honey. Good morning. Nice. We'll just get started. We're going to do this light roast, which is a Tanzanian pea berry to start with. Um, as far as weights and things for grounds to brew with, this I've discovered is the perfect amount, which is approximately 1.6 to 1.8 ounces. And that's enough for, I mean, a normal, like, eight cup pot of coffee. Mm-hmm. Here, I'm actually looking at the person who's out on the table. Get it, yeah, get it by looking at it. Got them. So these are pea berries, which, um, typically coffee. They smell amazing. Of course. We'll, uh, I'll pour some of these out, too. So as coffee grows, it grows inside of a cherry. And inside of that cherry, there's typically two seeds, which will grow inside of the cherry back to back, which is why one side is flat. Oh, okay. So the pea berry is when there's only one, which is why they're typically smaller and they're round. Oh, interesting. That's so cool, yeah. Yeah, everyone has their own, you know, everyone's very particular about how they do so, their coffee. Typically, I drink a French press every day. Um, but That's what I'm, we do, yeah. If I'm trying a new coffee, I'll do a pour over. Uh, you can get a similar strength with a pour over as you can out of a, a press, mm -hmm. um, but it's cleaner, hmm. if oh. that makes sense. Does the filter, is it the filtering? Um, that it like maybe cleanses the flavor a little bit. Or yeah, something? a little bit. So you pour mm. a little bit. To a little get bit in. Yep. It's called. Um, you allow the, the beans to bloom. It's called. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it opens up all the little pores in the coffee grounds so that Similar you get a better flavor extraction. French press also. Nice. Okay. Do that. Yeah. Yep. Give it a thirty second ish. Nice. Just a little bit of time. 
So these are the three that we're doing. The Discerning Gentleman. Which is a dark roast blend. The Guatemalan Goddess. That's awesome. And this, this first one's the Peaberry, correct? This is the Peaberry. Mr. T. Peaberry. Which is sort of an acquired liking, I would say. I People tried the Peaberry a couple it or times. Hate it. Yeah. It'll be a real interesting Now, contrast. is it a difference yeah, now? Different. Does that make the bean react differently or taste differently because of the way that it grows? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically, instead of two seeds essentially because that's what coffee is getting mm -hmm. the nutrients it's only one getting the nutrients also like it's kind of like a blast maybe yeah it's just different hmm. more than anything interesting and every coffee plant produces pea berries between five and ten percent of the time so it's a much more rare thing um i believe that in tanzania they've grafted um to make a hybrid plant to make pea berries specifically to make more pea berries so if you guys ever had coffee out of a Chemex? No. We've no. We I, I have at cafes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we I've pretty much been a French press person for about twenty years, twenty five yeah. years. It's it's low tech. It's easy, and I think it's the best tasting coffee, personally. Mm -hmm. We have coffee. We got our coffee. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna give one of you the pessimist mug. Oh. Oh, I brought our um, mugs, but yeah, no, that look that looks like fun. Because this that. glass is now half empty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little for one of you. That's good. Eric's more pessimistic than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I mean, I guess while we drink this, we can just cut the next one. Yeah, definitely. Cheers. Thank don't, you. Don't feel as though you have to finish this. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's got that real sour on the back of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And the sweet on the tip. Yeah. It's it is really sweet. Too. This is the... This is the Discerning Gentleman, which is a blend. The Discerning Gentleman. You can see it's quite a bit darker. This is the Discerning Gentleman. And that is about as dark as I typically go unless I'm making a, a limited supply or limited batch. So we're doing the lightest and then the darkest. And then we'll go to the medium. And the medium. Interesting. Oh, see, this yeah. one's blooming really nice. Ooh. Just expands. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. That's what uh, kind of does that whole puff up. So that's what you want to see. Mm hmm. And most of that comes with the freshness. Wow. French roast was created on accident. Really? Well, not necessarily accident. Um, so, France, back in, I don't know, 16th century or something, um, had ordered coffee. Um, and it showed up like. Eight, eight to ten months late and this whole time with shipping methods then it was sitting in the belly of this wooden ship literally oh, shipping <laughs> yeah and it showed up and it was all moldy oh, so oh. every last bag and they're like well we got it we paid for it we can't wait for more so they purposely burnt the shit out of it hmm? to kill the mold oh wow. and that's how they discovered it was like wow wait, this is better <laughs> as well. yeah mm -hmm. that one for a couple of years I actually had it refinished Nice. Spalted maple handle. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so this one is again the discerning gentleman. The discerning gentleman. Okay. You take the pessimist one. Yeah, it's more yeah. more nutty. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. More earthy. It is just darker. It punches you in the face more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure does. That's what I look for in coffee. Punching me in the face. <laughs> Everybody looks for something. <laughs> I guess I haven't had this one yet. No. And that's the medium roast, the goddess. Yep. The Guatemalan goddess. This might be my. We'll see. It's a certified fair trade organic Guatemalan. Okay. Guatemalan goddess. So people can just order these through apothecoffee.com? Absolutely. There we go. Oh, little bubbles. Yay. <laughs> Soaking down through. <laughs> the cauldron of goodness. Yum. It's like a cupping. It's like it's a cupping. It's like a cupping. <laughs> yeah, and the 
traditional way to cup is actually where you just take the cup and every cup is the same size, same shape, same thing. So you don't thing. know the difference or you and can't... And then you put the grounds in here and you let it steep and then you let the ground settle. And then you, and then you use a spoon. Oh, and oh you wow. put a spoon in, you slurp it. Um, so like here. They don't actually really swallow a lot of it. Uh-huh. So it's just to totally get just the flavor. Just like wine tasting, yeah. And then, you, and then they have another cup that's just water that you can rinse your spoon off with to go to the next one. Wow. Interesting. Emollients? Yeah, basically. <laughs> what are they? Is there something? Is there, is there a thing? There are people that dedicate their entire life to tasting coffee. I wish you could smell this, you guys. It's like, this <laughs> is um, absolutely... Now our coffee... I mean... The aroma in our van in the morning has substantially changed from before. <laughs> it was good before. It was good before. But now it's wonderful. But now it's amazing. Even... You are my hardworking man. Broke out the hat for the occasion. Getting your cup of joe. Yeah. Got my Panama. Well, it is a Sunday. That's yes, right. Yes, I mean, it's Panama Sunday. Gotta, gotta put your Sunday best. Mm, definitely my favorite. Mm. Have a sip. Mm, I could drink that black. That's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. It's much better. Yeah. yeah. It's smart on my taste. I like the, 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 the rose, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, but I think, yeah, that's what. Yeah. Mm. It's funny how different everybody's perspective and, and personal preference is. Mm. Yeah. It just has a richer flavor. Mm -hmm. That's what I think anyway. Yeah. Well done, yeah. sir. Well oh, done. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love how you got, I mean, the dates on every one of them. So, you know, people oh, yeah. know that this is the exact day that it was roasted. Yep. And I mean, so. So, uh, on average, from the fresh. day of roasting to customer, if you if you mail it, how long does it take? Um, typically, within five business days, it'll arrive at your door. But usually, if I get an order today, it's either shipping out today or tomorrow. Mm hmm. I went with these because they are 100% compostable, mm. but it keeps them as fresh as they, anything will. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Very cool. So do we, are, do we have the gloves on? Will you hold them up to dry? How do you feel about our situation and what's going on with our with our quarantine? Yeah, this location here specifically, I'm yeah. exceptionally grateful to have <laughs> this space to be at. Yeah, yeah. Um, Same here. We're we're in the park safe. right now, by the way, people. <laughs> We're safe and sheltered away from pretty much all of humanity here. Yeah. 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 Here we, I mean, it's such a, an eclectic group of, of individuals here yeah. with different skill sets and um, art technique. Oh, know, yeah. Mediums and just, that, what do you want to learn how to do today? Right. Right. What do you want let's to do today? Let's try this today. today. Yeah. Hey, let's start. My goal. Yeah. Change the world and people's perspective one cup at a time. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys found that as interesting as we found uh, <laughs> fun to uh, to talk with uh, Phil and interview him and show off his amazing uh, rig. And it's yeah. most fun to drink his coffee because it's so good. Yeah, his coffee's phenomenal. So, Apothecoffee.com. Apothecoffee.com. Apothecoffee on uh, Instagram also. And uh, we will share those links on here so you can uh, check into it. Uh, we'll get to our questions again next Thursday so uh, hold on to those thoughts and questions and again fire off some more for us if you have mm -hmm. them and uh, so be sure to check out Monday's video uh, it's gonna have our friend our host Joe's wood shop Goodly Woods uh, I'm gonna have a much more expanded view of uh, what he does and uh, yeah, how he does really it cool. and uh, um, so be sure to check that out too and make sure again keep on supporting our friends here if you can with uh, uh, orders and uh, see you next time okay <laughs> so, see ya thanks mm -hmm.